Hey guys, welcome back to Erin in Copenhagen. Today I've got a super fun video for you. I'm going to take you to five different places around the city that are, I don't really know what to call this video, but kind of like forgotten history or things that you walk by every day and you just don't either notice or you don't know the stories behind them. So if you're a local, come along and see how many you know about already. Or even if you're a tourist, uh, let me know down in the comments how many of these you've heard about. So let's get going. Our first one is located at perhaps one of the busiest parts of Copenhagen, but most people don't even know it's here. Maybe it's because you have to look up and away from the town hall. Most people are busy taking pictures of this building instead of turning around and seeing something just as interesting. So let's examine this lovely Art Deco building here, one of the few remaining such buildings in Copenhagen. You might have noticed a neon thermometer on the corner. This is original to the building and has the real old neon bulbs, not LED like is more commonly used today. The building dates from 1934 and the neon, as well as what I'm about to show you, date from 1936. So if you look up right at the top of the building, you'll notice two golden girls. Look closer and you'll see that one girl has a bicycle, whereas the other one has an umbrella and a dog on a leash. All the way up to the early 1990s, whenever it was raining, the girl with the umbrella would rotate out onto the corner, and if it was sunny, the girl with the bike would come out instead. Here are some old photos I found of them in action. Sadly, the almost 100-year-old mechanism that rotates the girls broke down in the early 90s and no one has been able to fix it. The building today is privately owned and the owner has stated they can't afford the repair costs. And because the building is privately owned, Copenhagen City Council isn't allowed to step in and help financially. This kind of financial help would be against Danish law. So the girls sadly remain frozen in limbo. It's a real shame and it makes me so sad every time I walk by the building because it would be such an awesome, unique feature to have in Copenhagen if it actually worked. Anyone with deep pockets want a new project? Here it is. This next one is a great example of the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Over the years, Copenhagen has seen its fair share of battles, which of course has left its mark on the city. Namely, tons of cannonballs lying all over the place. One of the ways these clever Danes decided to recycle them was to use them as building decoration, so literally turning a byproduct of war into something beautiful instead. Of course, because they're so small, they're easy to miss, like on this building here on Nørgel. These ones date from a war with the Swedish all the way back in 1659. They were rediscovered in the building when it was undergoing renovations in the early 1900s, and so they decided to repurpose them like this. You can see some more right next door at number 11 too. Look out for the old cannons that were repurposed as building corner protectors too, just like I showed you in my Amatol video. And hopping over to St. Gertrudstrel, you can see another one here dating from 1807, from when the English attacked Copenhagen. And on this building, located over at Vonmeagel, you can see quite a few more too. Buildings in Copenhagen are filled with little unique decorations like this, so next time you're walking around the city, look up, see what you can find. This next one is quite morbid, but it is a part of Copenhagen history, so I'm going to show you anyway. In Nytorv, or New Square in English, you can find a slightly raised section of paving in front of the city's court building. From 1627 to 1780, this was the town execution spot where they would hang or behead people, and other torture like branding and whipping would also occur publicly here too. Over here, you can see a little plaque marking the spot, and in this old illustration here, you can see what it would have looked like with the raised wooden scaffold. It's literally right next to the main shopping street, Stroet, yet a lot of people don't even know it's here. And especially if you don't speak Danish, because the plaque only explains what the site is in Danish, so it's an easy one to miss. <laughs> Now I'm taking you over to Studiestrel, and don't worry, I'm going to include Google Map links for all the places I'm featuring here so you can go see them yourself if you're curious. Located at what is today a nice hotel, native Danes might have already gotten a clue from the word on the side of the building, Bellenstelten. But if you don't speak Danish, it's easy to walk right by. This is actually an old public bathhouse, as the word on the building advertises. 
You can also see right at the top some letters over each of the top windows spelling out Renlihil or cleanliness in English. There's also text reading the people's bath over what used to be a gate here but is now just a window. What's more, if you go inside the lobby, you can even still see the beautiful sculpted ceiling showing various scenes of people bathing, dating from the original bathhouse from the early 1900s. This one is actually a two-in-one for you here, and just may have sealed its place as Aaron's new favorite spot in Copenhagen. This beautiful garden, located behind the iconic Black Diamond Library Building, is a worthy visit in itself. It's a quiet spot in the city that not many tourists go to. but there's a couple specific things inside the garden I want to show you. Where I'm walking now actually used to be underwater. This was an old naval harbor, and evidence of that can be seen here with old mooring rings built into the side of the wall. These would have docked ships from the 16 and 1700s. The harbor was later filled in, and the garden you see today was created in 1920. Additionally, there are four large planters placed in each corner of the garden. These are actually repurposed columns from the old Klestiansborg Palace that burned down in 1794, so they date from around the mid-1700s. Thanks so much for coming along today. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you thought, if you've heard of any of these before, and if you're rich enough to save the weather girls, because that also needs to happen. Um, and also a really quick thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. I, I'm almost at 400 now, which kind of blows my mind. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe down below and then you can come along for the next Copenhagen adventure. See you next time.